Hi, in this PowerPoint, we will expand on L'Oreal's learning types and take you through how to use the ABC design method to plan your course content. Please note that this ABC design method can be used in the planning of a single lesson, weekly lessons, modules, or an entire semester or year course. The ABC learning design method makes use of the six learning types, acquisition, discuss, produce, investigate, collaborate, and practice, which are used to create a visual storyboard showing the type and sequence of learning activities required to meet a module's learning outcomes and how these will be assessed. Using learning types as a basis for designing your course or module shifts thinking to how students will learn rather than simply a list of topics to teach. Each learning type is associated with particular activities which can further be linked to specific online tools. In using the learning types, it is important to be mindful of the principles of universal design for learning. These principles are used to ensure inclusion of students from different backgrounds and takes into account that we all have different learning styles and preferences. Providing multiple means of engagement entails contextualizing content so that students can relate to it and extract meaning. Providing multiple means of representation is about having content in a variety of formats to cater for students who differ in visual, auditory, and kinesthetic learning styles. Different formats are also essential in the case of internet connection costs, where students may want to read a video transcript rather than watching a video. Providing multiple means of action and expression is about providing opportunities for all students to participate in activities and assessments. For instance, those whose mother tongue language is not English, those who are introverts, those who prefer written than verbal communication, those who may have dyslexia or need extra time due to anxiety. The acquisition type is about students learning content through reading, listening, viewing or watching. The associated activities could be that students need to read a chapter in a book or listen to a podcast, watch a recorded lecture video or view slides in a PowerPoint file. To simplify, it is about the medium of the content. Is the content a text? Is the content audio only or video? Is the content in the form of an image, slide or some kind of other file? Although there is no set order in terms of which of the six learning types should come first or last, acquisition type learning activities are often used as a starting point in the form of pre-tasks that students need to work through. The discussion learning type involves students learning through conversations and gives space for student voice, encourages reflection, alternative ways of thinking. It also connects topics and improves analytical skills. In a traditional face-to-face -face mode, you may have used weekly tutorial groups for this or reserved space in your face-to-face -face lectures for students to share their thoughts on a specific topic. In the online mode, this could translate to using discussion forums on Vula or chats in MS Teams. You can also create opportunities for sharing of voice notes than only text, which is a good way to include students who may feel comfortable expressing themselves verbally than in a written form. Keep in mind that there are students who have challenges with access to technology and Wi-Fi, so you would have to think about what could work best for the entire class. The collaboration learning type is about students working together in search of understanding, meaning and solutions to problems. Similarly to the discussion learning type, it is about students being part of the knowledge building process rather than passive receivers of knowledge. Think about what kinds of projects students could collaboratively work on for this learning type to be evident and nurtured. Examples could entail writing a paper together or building a student content lesson page on Vula. You will notice that some learning types tend to overlap, such as discuss, collaborate, and even produce. 
This is completely natural to occur. In this instance, you would consider an activity as having several components as to include all these learning types. Sometimes these elements would require specific time, so a group activity may require investigation of a case study, collaboration to write up the joint report, and production to present that project. The investigate learning type involves a student actively exploring and critiquing ideas and information. In a traditional face-to-face -face setting, this could entail the student setting up questions and using them to collect information on a field trip. In the online mode, this could be adapted. These questions could be used to interview an expert via Zoom or Skype instead. Investigate may mean setting a desk research task like finding the environmental policies from company websites or compiling a list of countries with the highest rates of COVID-19 testing. It is important that students learn by doing, so think creatively of how they can still engage in the act of doing and experimenting in your particular disciplinary areas, but in online mode. The practice learning type provides the student with opportunities to apply their knowledge and skills whilst getting feedback from peers, tutors and lecturers. Examples include case studies which students can work through and get feedback from their group tutor or the lecturer, or engaging in multiple choice questions of which incorrect answers can have feedback to why those options are not correct. The produce learning type consolidates what students have learned by producing an artifact. The activities in this learning type lends itself to assessment. However, activities in the other learning types can also be assessed. It all depends on what is decided to include as part of the assessment mark. Examples include essays, portfolios, presentations, or design models. So how do you go about using these six learning types? There are different ways that the ABC method can be used. We suggest that a spreadsheet document type be used. You can also make use of our template that can be downloaded. Alternatively, you can set up a Word or Google document if that is easier for you to work in. In this example, you can see that each activity has a line or row of its own. In the column titled Lesson, we have used numbers to order the learning activities, which helps us to know how content flows or is linked. In the column titled Lesson Type, we have categorized the type of learning also using specific colors, which helps in seeing which learning types are more present and if that is what is intended. In the column called Tool, the company tool is listed. For text-based content, a good idea is to describe if the text is in the form of a Word document, PDF, blog, and so forth. You can also add a link to that particular work. In the column titled Time, time durations are included to get an overview of how much time each of the items may take, so that we know if we are bombarding students with too much content or engagement activities. Please note, this is meant to be the estimate of how much time students will spend on an activity. So, if it is a journal article, the time estimate should be what an average student would take to closely read the article. If it is a 15-minute video, you should probably allow 30 minutes so that a student can stop and take notes. Spending time on the estimation is important so that you have a good sense of how much time you are expecting students to spend engaging with your materials. Once you have noted down the activities using the spreadsheet, you now have an overall picture or plan of how the lesson, week or course will look like. The next step would be for you to reflect on your plan. You can reflect on your course design plan by counting and totaling the number of learning types that you have used. In the spreadsheet template, we have set this up for your convenience. Once you have populated this spreadsheet, you will be able to see your course design shape in the form of a pie chart or radar chart. Through this means, you are able to visually see how your course looks like, 
noting the learning types that are dominating and reflecting if this matches the pedagogical framework that you had in mind. Remember, the aim is not to equally use the learning types, but to choose learning types based on how your students learn and how best the concept could be taught and engaged with. To summarize, here are steps in using the ABC design method. Step 1. Start off with brainstorming ideas in relation to the learning outcomes you have decided on. In some cases, you may have existing content already in which you need to decide how you will divide up or chunk. Step 2. Start listing and detailing each activity item in terms of the learning type, the name of the activity, the format. You can use a spreadsheet for this or make notes that you would later populate on the spreadsheet. Step 3. You now have a plan. In this step, you need to review and reflect on the shape of your course plan. You can also ask colleagues to have a look at it and give feedback on it. You can ask them for specific feedback too, such as how realistic is it or if it is too much content. Once you have implemented feedback, you are ready to start producing and organizing your course.